Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bit of a gecko story time with a few words of wisdom at the end for some of my younger viewers who are looking to buy a reptile. In today's story we will be focused on Gizmo here and how I came to own her. So I'll try to be brief on parts of this because I believe I've mentioned it before, but back in 2003 I was 10 years old and I went along to a reptile show at my school where they pretty much brought out reptiles, talked about reptiles and a few of them you could interact with. They also gave out this booklet. Yeah, 15 years later I still have this thing. When reading through it I realised I really wanted a leopard gecko. This begins my three year quest to get a leopard gecko. You see, my parents of course would not let me just get one, that would be an impulse buy, which is never good, and especially when you're 10 and you have no money. Not to mention, we had like no reptile shops near us, which was probably a good thing in hindsight. So they told me I'd have to do plenty of research and save up all my money. Now of course when you're 10, you can't get a job, and my parents didn't give us like, any pocket money or anything like that, so I literally had to rely on saving up birthday money and Christmas money for three years. Now back in 2003, sure the internet was around, but the information on leopard geckos on the internet was somewhat limited. I mean, we didn't even have YouTube. What we did have though were a few books, limited websites, and this booklet. Now, some people will criticise others for taking advice from people on the internet and say you should trust things like books. Now, I'd like to point out that these books that I read Although they weren't terrible, there were some major inaccuracies which could have cost my geckos their life if I followed the advice. Which also reminds me, there was actually a reptile shop kind of far out from me, but a friend of mine, after he saw I got a leopard gecko, he wanted one, he went to that shop that had shop advised using calci sand, and sadly within the year that gecko had died. That's why now, more than ever, through YouTube, through more up-to-date books, through websites and even apps, we can connect with leopard gecko owners all over the world with different ranges of experience and get advice. This smoothly moves me on to the sponsor of today's video, Amino Apps. Now this is an app I have mentioned before and I still use to this day. It's an app where you can connect with people all over the world by your interests. For example, I am part of the Reptile Amino and the Leopard Gecko Amino. I really love testing my knowledge with the quizzes and scrolling down the Reptile Aminos page and seeing all different reptiles, you know, the gifs, the memes, they're great. It's always nice to scroll through and see something new on the feed every day with either a story or a Q&A, a poll or a quiz attached. I would love for you guys to go over there go onto my profile and post your photos of your geckos and they may be featured in the next video. To take part, follow the link in either the description or the pinned comment to download the app for free on iOS or Android and once you're on Amino, search reptiles to join. Anyway, back to the story. So three years later, I finally am able to afford a gecko and all of its things. I start looking for local breeders and that's when I found Gizmo and her siblings. I actually remember the date I put down the deposit on Gizmo, 13th of September, 2006. I have a very weird memory. I can remember things very specifically like that. I am so glad that I met the breeder I did because she actually told me about all the risks of sand and using calci sand and advised me otherwise, whereas literally everywhere else at the time recommended it. The same day I put a deposit down on Gizmo, I bought a secondhand vivarium that came with a gecko book, a vivarium lock, water dish, food dish, and a hide, and I think a few fake plants, and that only cost me £30. So if you're on a budget, there is a way of doing things on the cheap, but also providing a nice home. So look out for those bargains. There's nothing wrong with secondhand, especially when you're starting off. I went on to buy all the other equipment and decorations needed and had to wait a couple months before I actually got Gizmo. Now, this is where my advice comes in because I get a lot of people who are teenagers who's already got their geckos, but they say they have a very basic setup because they can't afford it at the moment, which makes me question whether they can afford 
you know, the food regularly or vets if things go wrong. Some people even say they don't use supplements because they're kind of pricey and they don't have the money. See, I've been there. I've been 13, but my parents made me wait three years. They made me accept the commitment I was getting into, realise the responsibility, save the money, do the research. And in fairness, they are helpful near the start. The, for a few years, my mum would pay for the feed of insects. Obviously, I didn't have a lot because I only had Gizmo and Mini for a very long time. But I was 13, I couldn't actually work. So I have been in your position before, but these are the things we need to talk about before getting a gecko. We don't want to give subpar care, we don't want them living in boxes. If we don't give them the correct supplements, food and heating, their bodies won't function. These aren't options, these aren't things you can just be like, oh, do they really need? These are necessities. And if they're not met, this leads to the vets, which costs far, far more. So my advice to anyone watching who's in a position of thinking of getting a gecko, make sure you have a plan, make sure you've done your research as much as possible. A healthy leopard gecko rarely needs to go to the vets, but it's always good to have money aside just in case, especially if you're buying from say PetSmart or Petco and it's kind of got a bad reputation. A lot of those geckos come out of that shop ill already and you then have to take them to the vets. There are certain things like parasites that you cannot cure, you have to go to the vets. So that's another thing, be mindful of where you're buying from because there's I've seen so many that have sticked out or other parasites and people just go, ah, I can't afford the vet so I won't go. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Please don't cut corners on the essential things like tanks and hides and things like that can be bought second hand at far cheaper prices just make sure you disinfect everything before using it for your gecko but things like food heating supplements vets anything like that just don't cut corners i was fortunate that my parents had my back if i was struggling though i did a lot of it on my own but before getting a gecko just make sure you've spoken to your parents about this make sure you have put money aside for anything your gecko may need make sure you realize these guys can live up to 20 years or more so they're a big commitment make sure you have a tank set up well before getting a gecko never just buy a gecko and then all its supplies and quickly set it all up um there's a lot that goes into it and you definitely have to mature quickly because you yeah you're getting yourself into a big commitment as a teenager but 12 years later, I still have gizmo and I wouldn't change anything. So I hope this video hasn't put you off. Leopard geckos are awesome, but they're just not for everyone. Anyway, I hope you've liked this story time. If you can't have an exotic pet at the moment, but you want some kind of pet, check out my last video. But thank you to Amino Apps for sponsoring today's video. Thank you to you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you and goodbye.